I spent 50 years of my life with the heavyweight champion of the world. Everywhere he went, everybody knew him. Everybody wanted to touch him and talk to him. While the president of the United States or the president of Russia was trying to get his attention, he was picking up a baby or a young person and touching them and talking to them and empathizing with them. That's what made him a great champion. Environmental justice is the same exact thing. You have to take care of the people who don't have the power to take care of themselves. You have to represent them in halls that they sometimes are not represented in. Because if you don't do that, you're not really on a life mission that is worthwhile. I think everybody cares about the air we breathe. I care for my family, my wife, my children. I care about my neighbors, my community. I care about the 17 million people that live in Southern California. And I work every day to try and bring them cleaner air to breathe. The South Coast AQMD is a leader, an innovator, an incubator for air pollution controls. Our mission with the AQMD is really to uh, clean up the air in this basin to make it the most healthful air people can breathe. Air quality matters tremendously because it has a direct impact on public health. When we think about health, there are things that we can control and there are things that we cannot control. We can change our diet, we can exercise more, but you cannot change the air that you breathe. The other day, it had just rained, and I was walking to class, and I noticed I could see the mountains. I didn't realize you could see the mountains from where I was, and I had been there for months. So if you grow up around here, you're used to smoggy days, and you're used to everything being like this, and you might not necessarily realize it shouldn't be like this. 50 years ago, the smog was so bad here that on the freeways, we'd have 60 and 70 cars crash together in a single accident because they couldn't see each other on the freeway. Back in the 1950s, when I took the train from Needles to the University of Redlands, there were days that you couldn't see 200 yards because of uh, a smog. We have very few smog days today. The political commitment that this country has made to, to clean air has been a public health triumph. The regional air pollutant concentrations have come down consistently over the last 40 to 50 years. We really are pleased with the progress, and I think most Southern Californians feel it in terms of the air they breathe or being able to see the mountains on more days of the year. There's a number of people now who say, what are you doing? The air's OK. I live on the west side of Los Angeles, and it's fine. But it's not fine for everybody. We wake up in the morning, and usually in California, there is a blue sky but we don't really understand that there are places, hot spots in Southern California and where I am at right now in Boyle Heights is one of those places where the air is not that good. It's always been a, a problem because of the proximity to the city of Vernon and also all the traffic that goes through here. This area here is known as the diesel death zone. We're boarded on the west by refineries and rail yards. We boarded on the south by the Port of Long Beach, north by the 405 freeway, and to the east by the 710 freeway. The 
todos nosotros en esta familia tenemos problemas de salud, especialmente problemas respiratorios. Todos tenemos asma y es, es muy frustrante para, para mí como madre no poder ayudarle. About seven years ago, I began to experience a breathing problem. It got so bad that going from my bed to the bathroom was a two-stop trip. That gave me a first-hand experience with what it's like to have asthma or some other respiratory disorder caused by air pollution. Southern California's air today is actually the worst in the nation. The fact is that according to the best estimates, nearly 5,000 Southern Californians die prematurely each year due to air pollution. That's clearly unacceptable by anybody's standards. While we're sitting here doing this interview, 15 people will die today from pollution-related illnesses. 15 died yesterday, 15 died the day before, and 15 will die tomorrow. So it's never fast enough, and it's never enough for those people. So the job continues. It's a job that must be continued for some time. Tantos vecinos que ya hemos despedido, que han sido impactados por el cáncer. My biggest fear is that I get cancer and I wouldn't be able to see my kids, my children's kids. Children are getting sick as a result of exposures to air pollution that are occurring right now. We see at our clinic um, children every day who are suffering from asthma, and many of them have asthma that is not under control. I actually had a patient that died of asthma. He was this adorable young child. His mother had severe asthma, his aunt had severe asthma. If people keep doing this stuff, we won't be able to breathe, and it will be hard for us to live our lives. And if we can live our lives, then we can start a new generation. We've known for years that air pollution will trigger an asthma attack in a child with asthma. What we didn't know was that it actually can affect lung growth and actually cause asthma. I was born in LA County. I moved all around there when I was when I was a baby. And and because of that, I I have asthma now. And I, and a lot of my friends have asthma. By the time they graduate from high school, we see almost a five-fold increase in rates of abnormal lung function from the cleanest communities to the dirtiest communities. There's increasing evidence that local exposure right around major roadways increase the risk of uh, chronic disease, and there's no regulatory framework for that. You can't put a school near a major freeway, but you can put in a major traffic corridor near a school. The largest portion of pollution in our basin are mobile sources. When you look at the whole stage, from drilling to expiration, from extracting that oil from the ground in a foreign country somewhere, causing pollution, then to take that oil on a super tanker that crosses the ocean from a satellite, you can see the trail of pollution coming from the Middle East all the way to the United States. That ocean liner sits there off the port and burns that fuel, which spreads and disperses throughout the region. In the next stages, it transport that to the refineries. Then from the refinery, you need those large diesel tankers to take it to the gas station. That's where you, the consumer, are able to put your money in it and get that. These impact is a direct relationship to the number of premature deaths in our basin. 180,000 trucks operating in an inner city core put out the same pollution as one million passenger cars. So what that would tell me is, do we want to target the truck application as the biggest contributor to pollution? If you're in an area of bad pollution, you're a freeway or a busy road, you're inhaling nitric oxides, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and if it's diesel, there are particulate matter which not only goes in your system, but goes in your lungs, your organs, and in your cells. There are two main components of smog. There's ozone pollution, and then there's particulate matter. Sometimes it confuses people to talk about ozone pollution, because when they think of ozone and the environment, they think of the ozone layer disappearing over Antarctica. Ozone is good up high, but it's not good close 
to Earth. It's a strong oxidant, which means that it can oxidize respiratory tissue and that causes an inflammation kind of like sunburn. Then there's also particulate matter, and that's like what we see. So that's the brown haze over Los Angeles. On polluted days, if you get out and exercise outdoor, you can breathe in 5, 10, even 15 times the amount of air that you would if you were sitting at home without exercising. All the people in the gym doing weights, as you breathe, you're inhaling emissions from those cars, those trucks, those airplanes. Most of those gyms are in your freeways or busy streets, in the middle of commercial areas. My little sister is in elementary school right now. She's in kindergarten. And the playground of the school is very close to a freeway. There have been studies that show that children, especially, for example, playing on sports teams in areas where the pollution is very bad, they have negative pulmonary function just from something that ought to be beneficial and good for them. I think it just seems really unjust to me that just because of where we live, we're at a higher risk. Some of our early findings suggest that even short-term exposure to the type of pollution that we find along busy freeways can activate genes in the brain that are genes that we associate with cancer. There is preliminary proof that when a pregnant woman breathes, the PM particles that are microscopic transmit through her bloodstream to the fetus causing possible brain damage. That's scary stuff. Can't let that happen. We have to grapple with our energy source pollution. The transportation of goods from our ports to our retailing establishments is a major problem which has got to be handled. If we look at the Twin Port Complex, it is by far our largest source of air pollution. These ports that serve us, uh, Long Beach and Los Angeles, the harbors, import about 40 to 44 percent of the nation's imported goods. A tremendous center of commerce. As the containers leave the port and travel by rail and truck, the air pollution from the locomotives and trucks goes directly into the communities along the freeways and the rail lines. And a lot's being done to what we call green the ports. But in spite of that progress, a lot more needs to be done. We need to be thinking of creating a zero emission goods movement system. And it needs to start at the ports. I know that the economy has got to be considered. And I know that you got to put people before economy. So it's just a horrific balancing act. And we're continually trying to work on that. A lot of the freight trains that are out there, that's also one of the largest sources of pollution, specifically in areas such as downtown Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside. This particular rail yard was found to be the most toxic of the 18 major rail yards in the state. Not just by a little bit, but by uh, almost double. And to clean this up, to make our city safe in terms of quality of the environment is a very important part of my mission. Well, the railroad facility behind us, uh, ICTF terminal, was built in 1986. Right behind this rail trains right here behind me, there are low income housing, senior citizen housing, and a school within a quarter of a mile of a major rail facility. This used to be a wildlife area for kids to play in. They're cheating us out of quality of life. That's what we're being cheated out of, quality of life. And that's what we want. Everybody thinks they can dump anything they want into West Long Beach. We're not a third world country and we damn well gonna fight back. Clean air certainly is a right. On a personal level, I'm very involved because I think it's a matter of justice. And I think that the tragedy is when certain uh, communities, uh, because of their income background, or they may not have the same education, uh, are taken for granted. 
you see there where the uh, the abuse is is more rampant people think they can dump things people think they can have different uh, types of industry that will not have uh, an impact or will not be uh, contested I think we have the same right that everybody else the right to breathe it's really a human rights issue we need more than we need shelter we need clean air and we need clean water you know I would even go to say that there should be an amendment in our Constitution promising those things to people if we're really serious about a democracy even from a government perspective you have to look at what are the health costs what does it really cost us in increasing health concerns or, or medical bills versus the cost of reducing that pollution? Green transportation solutions can have a major impact on uh, pollution reduction, uh, you know, not only here in Southern California, but, but globally. There are no technology barriers today. It's really just moving those technologies into commercialization, putting these vehicles in the hands of masses to get the sheer volume out there. And all with the intention of producing these vehicles that will reduce our carbon footprint. So we can have these solutions that really have a global impact on this planet. I believe that to eliminate air pollution is a goal that is attainable. I think we have the resources. I think we have the initiatives. And I think that we have the, the people, the will of the people to do that. Sometimes we talk about clean air as a goal. It really needs to be a passion for Southern Californians. If you asked me 30 years ago when I started in the air pollution field whether or not we would see the progress that we've had to date, including some of the innovative technologies that are being developed right here in Southern California, we might have been pessimistic. But I can tell you from 30 years' experience, we shouldn't be. We should be optimistic. And it's a matter of the community just pulling together. There are no magic bullets for protecting people from the health effects of, of air pollution. It is that personal responsibility and involvement that will help to create the momentum towards healthful air. You know, it's, it's about shifting the way that, that we think about everything that we do, and, and it's, it's like a worldview shift. Our kids are going to live with what we leave them. And if we don't leave them something good, they're going to be worse off than we are. So we got to start now to change it. I guess if I had a message to you know, people in power, corporations and politicians and stuff, it would basically be you know, live as if our future matters. Live as if the future of my generation matters. Because I don't want to grow up in a world that the air we breathe is toxic. I don't want my children or my grandchildren to grow up in that type of world. I think we all need to demand better air quality. Companies will behave responsibly if we make them. It isn't just that we, we just came on this earth, but we have a responsibility to keep it clean and to encourage people to do that. And I think the religious communities can play a great role in keeping our environment clean. It's time for all the faith communities out there to partner with us at AQMD with the neighborhoods to clean up our air here in Southern California so it's safe and healthy for everyone. We can come together and save Southern California and make it the beautiful place it was meant to be. The people in the senior citizen homes have a role. The everyday worker has a role. And the children definitely have a role. This is everybody's endeavor. And you gotta get us all involved.